Hello everybody, I'm Grant Boxleitner and this is Local Doctors on Call. Today our topic is natural prevention to dementia and Alzheimer's. And once again, Dr. Misha Payand is here. He's the president of East West College of Natural Medicine in Sarasota. He's also worked in one of the world's largest integrated hospitals in Shanghai, China. And it's nice to see you, doctor. So why is this topic so important? This topic is important because we have a severe epidemic going on right now uh, with the baby boomers uh, coming up to age and our aging population. We're seeing a, a severe increase in, in dementia, cognitive decline, and Alzheimer's disease. We hear a lot about that, uh, you know, even in the news. Uh, a lot of these stories are, are focused on, on that issue. Now, is there a way to naturally prevent or even reverse dementia or Alzheimer's? There is. There's, there's multiple causes of Alzheimer's disease. Um, it's it's multi-causal, so we have to take a multi-approach, um, a multi-modality uh, approach to to reversing decline. And how do you go about doing some of that? Well, we're going to have to look at a bunch of different components: um, uh, uh, diet, nutrition, mm -hmm. lifestyle, medications. Um, we have to work as as a team right. of of integrative physicians uh, and get to the actual root cause of the uh, decline in, in cognition. Yeah, absolutely. And when you're treating patients, sometimes uh, the research and trying to figure out ways, I mean, you have to concentrate on both. Is that fair to say? Sure. That's why there's not actually one pill uh, for Alzheimer's. There's no no single pill to cure or reverse Alzheimer's. Yeah, because there's, there's no secret pill, wonder drug, nothing like that, at least not yet. Correct. And, and again, it's because there's multiple causes to Alzheimer's. Um, we do have some medications like Aricep uh, that has some uh, some improvement, um, but usually it's only temporary. Is it treating symptoms or absolutely just symptoms? Okay. And there, um, but there's some negative side effects to those, mm. and. Knowing your genetic profile, that's one particular drug. If you have a uh, genetic variation in, say for instance, your CYP2D6, sure. you're not going to be able to, um, to eliminate that drug that, and the toxins involved in that drug. Yeah. So you can, you can make a bad situation worse. Yeah, it's, just, it's a fascinating topic. Now, let's talk about some of these approaches, perhaps. Sure. Um, one, of course, is nutrition, taking a look at uh, what, what people are eating. Of course, we're going to have to uh, remove some things and add some things. Processed foods, for one, um, simple carbohydrates, sugars, grains. And how do patients take to that? I mean, obviously, you know, when you're talking about some of their foods, they can potentially get a little sensitive. Yes, very, <laughs> very sensitive. And it's difficult to work um, with someone that has um, a lifetime of these bad habits when they're 50, 60, 70 years old. Trying to change these habits are, are very difficult. That's why it takes a, a team effort. Right. And is this a normal progression? Like, does everybody deal with this the same way and you can almost chart it? Uh, or is it uh, different for all people? It's different for all people because there's so many different causes. Mm. So if there was one cause, then we could probably say there's going to be a particular progression. But because it's multi-causal, then people are going to respond and uh, be affected differently. Um, the idea is to get to the root cause of the decline. Now, this could come from a very uh, varying reasons. One, you can have someone that has a heavy metal toxicity yeah. or sensitivity, like mercury. So mercury poisoning can actually mimic dementia. And I've read somewhere where once mercury gets in your body, it's not like other potential compounds. It, it tends to stay there, uh, and there's really no way to, right. to get at least all of it out of your system. Is, is that right? It's very difficult um, to get these, these heavy metals and, um, and toxins out. Mm -hmm. There's chelation therapy, for instance, but these take time. Um, so again, taking a, a team approach, so going to a dentist who specializes in removing uh, uh, fillings that have mercury and knowing how to do it properly. Yeah, that's, that's so important. Uh, and also, I, I see some other things, potentially a hormonal imbalance. Uh. Sure. Um, 
women uh, of a certain particular age are we're finding more and more become hypothyroid um, and they be, they start taking medications like Synthroid well that will work fine for for many years but it's going to come to a point where it's not going to work as well the T4 is not going to convert to the T3 the mm -hmm. active form as well so at a certain point we're going to need to supplement that and usually we use a desiccated form of thyroid so many things to think about it and even estrogen testosterone levels of brain function right exactly those testosterone and estrogen those are other hormones that will have a, a dramatic effect on our cognitive cognitive abilities but um, by doing certain tests, we can find out, say for instance, a patient is deficient in DHEA, it's mm -hmm. another, it's a precursor. So we can supplement the patient with DHEA and we can see. Um, now uh, if you do something like that with a patient, how often do you monitor whether this might be having an effect? Is it like monthly visits or perhaps more? Well, what we're gonna wanna do is um, get a baseline of tests. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes these tests are, um, are more esoteric, if you will. Right. So we're going to need to find out what nutritional deficiencies a patient has. So doing an organic acid test, ah. testing the urine, that'll tell us exactly if there's deficiencies in um, carbohydrate metabolism, fat metabolism, right. B complex markers, things like Establishing that. Establishing that base so then you can kind of go from there. Exactly, finding out exactly what the patient's deficient in so we can supplement them for their bio-individual Case. Now, when we're talking about these treatments, I know that some of the elderly take a lot of medications. I know my mother, she takes quite a few. And I'm just wondering if the combination of these drugs, if you're already taking these medicines, can have an uh, effect on, on this uh, treatment approach. Absolutely. Oftentimes at East West College of Natural Medicine in our student clinic, we will have patients come in with their medical records mm -hmm. and lists of all these medications that they're taking. Um, and these are coming from um, the physicians that are specialists. They're going to the rheumatologist, their oncologist, their gastroenterologist. Their heart doctor. Exactly. So everybody's prescribing all these medications. And oftentimes what we'll find is some of these, me these medications are doing the same thing, so they're just upping the dose. Oh. So again, part of that team effort is finding a pharmacist that will be able to work with the patient and take a look at all these drugs and say, okay, maybe we need to cut back on some of these. Yeah. Some of these are doing the same thing. And the redundancies, <clears throat> perhaps, in some of these. Exactly, and once you, some, some of these drugs are supposed to be taken with food, without food, in the morning, in the evening, but what happens is the older, the older a patient gets, the more they're less inclined to, um, inclined to take them properly. So to stay take on them, the regimen. Exactly, so let's take them all at one time. Mm. Well, all these chemicals at one time are going to have a different effect than if you took them individually. It's like going into your, your kitchen cabinet and taking all these chemicals and pouring them into a bottle. <laughs> Something's gonna happen, right? Yes, absolutely. So the same thing that is going to happen in our stomach if we take all these medications at one time. So you do almost, as you have them set out, you almost want a calendar or something of the time to take each one of them to, to stay on point. Exactly, so these medications, these combinations of medications can cause cognitive decline. So it's not necessarily dementia or Alzheimer's that it, it could be misdiagnosed. Yeah, and you, you really have to make sure that you, you stay, uh, keep a close eye on that. So are there approaches that families and physicians can take uh, when we're talking about all this? The best approach is, again, to, to come up with a good team, a support system, okay. um, a holistic uh, MD or a DO, holistic dentist, um, a doctor of oriental medicine, even a massage therapist, people that are willing to talk and communicate together to come up with a plan. Absolutely. Uh, really fascinating uh, topic we're talking about here, Alzheimer's and dementia and, and the natural approach to trying to treat these, these devastating diseases. I mean, families uh, talk about, you know, losing loved ones, you know, in front of their eyes. It's really something uh, that we have to take seriously. Exactly, especially if they're being misdiagnosed. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we can actually reverse just by simple things like modifying diet or supplementing the, the proper way. Yes, all great information, Dr. Payne. We're going to have much more, and we will have more local doctors on call right after this.
Hello, I'm Dr. Misha Payan, President of East West College of Natural Medicine. For over 20 years, we've been helping our patients improve their health, and more importantly, maintain their health by using Oriental and Western medicine. Many of our patients refer to us as the best kept secret in Sarasota. Call today to schedule your consultation or for more information regarding our program in Oriental medicine. East West College of Natural Medicine. It's not a secret anymore. Ever dream of helping people? At East West College of Natural Medicine, our massage therapy program could help you achieve your dreams. Our program combines the theory and clinical application of various types of massage treatments and modalities. You could discover a path to providing pain relief, help increase mobility, and share relaxation. Let us help you realize your dream. Call 941-355-9080 today. Welcome back to Local Doctors on Call. Dr. Misha Payant is here, and we're talking about natural preventions for dementia and Alzheimer's. And I want to talk a little bit about the brain and diet. How can diet potentially affect the brain when we're, when we're talking about these debilitating diseases? Sure. There's a direct link between the amount of sugar and carbohydrates and grains that we eat uh, that have an effect on the brain. No one explains this better than Dr. David Perlmutter in mm -hmm. his book, Grain Brain. Um, there's now what we even consider type 3 diabetes, which is basically related to Alzheimer's and insulin resistance. Yeah, I've heard of type 2, but type 3, uh, interesting stuff. And so sugar, simple uh, carbohydrates, uh, these are potentially... Uh, bad for our brain. Absolutely. They can have a, a severe uh, negative effect on our, our cognition. Um, just in, by eliminating these, tapering them down, and not necessarily um, making extreme changes in the diet, but small changes over a long period of time, then we can see reversal in the cognitive. And, and we know that kids eat a lot of these, these sugars, uh, the cereals, uh, what have you, and even some of the sodas. Does it start that early where you really need to be keeping track on Because when we think of dementia and Alzheimer's, it's typically something advanced age, although you can get it uh, younger in some rare cases. Absolutely. Now, it's a lifetime of, of these mm -hmm. sugars and uh, carbohydrates that, that the elderly are, are looking at right now. But as we're younger, our bodies have a, a better defense against these, these toxins and uh, deficiency, deficiency can, foods. Can rid the body, break it down a little easier. Exactly, but over, over time, over a lifetime mm. that of this damage, our, our bodies aren't able to So to best process. to make those habits the younger you can. And Absolutely, absolutely. Great with, advice. Starting with kids, but that's easier said than done in most cases. For sure. Now, Alzheimer's and dementia, how, is, how can we, I guess, characterize this? Uh, even some sort of a, of a brain inflammation? Yes, actually, um, there are, are other diseases that will mimic dementia or even Alzheimer's, like um, Lyme's disease. Okay. Um, that's, that could uh, cause brain inflammation. And, and that is caused only by um, that, that certain um, tick uh, bite that you get? Or? Uh, they are tick-borne illness. It is a tick-borne illness. I think we're finding more and more that um, it, it can be transmitted uh, maybe even sexually hmm. um, and by other by other insects, but right now, for sure, we know that it is a tick-borne illness, right. and it's not necessarily localized to one area of the U.S. as it once was. I mean, this is Florida; it's, it's close it's to been, Thanksgiving, yes. so the snowbirds are going to be coming People back with their pets, down, right. right? So um, this, that's another thing to to keep in mind and use as a differential diagnosis. That Absolutely, uh, and is that the only disease that potentially gets uh, confused with, with these two others? No, absolutely not. Um, even a vitamin B12 deficiency can mimic dementia. Um, there, we can do tests, nutritional tests, to find out if there is a B12 right. deficiency. Also, we can do a genetic test, and if there's a polymorphism with the MTHFR, the methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase gene, then that says a person isn't able to, to process uh, B12 as, as well as they should, so they may need m more methylated forms of vitamin B12. And when we're talking about mimicking uh, these other diseases, uh, memory lapses, things like that? Absolutely. That Just cognitive decline, okay. uh, memory loss, things, things like that. Great. All right, and as far as... Um, 
we, we talked about some of these, uh, the B12 deficiency. Um, anything else um, that, uh, that we should keep in mind when, when we're talking about these two diseases in terms of what it may be instead of these two? Um, well, there's a, a, a ton of other actually things. For one, um, even the loss you even of a mentioned, spouse, right? Yeah, um, grieving. Exactly. That could so this. if you have a couple that have been together for several years, um, they, in, with the loss of a spouse, they might exhibit signs of withdrawal mm -hmm. um, that might lead to memory loss or, or dementia. But this is just part of the grieving process. So being able to to find out the exact cause of this cogn cognitive decline, that's the key factor, not just labeling it immediately yeah. dementia at all. All great information, and we're going to transition now, and, and you have something here. Sure. Let's take it over to Russ at East West College, and he'll talk about the new programs that we have going on right now. Thank you, Dr. P. Here at East West College of Natural Medicine, we have a massage therapy program where our students will learn Swedish massage, acupressure, aromatherapy, deep tissue massage, uh, and additionally, they'll learn Asian modalities like shiatsu, gua sha, and moxibustion. Uh, these modalities will help provide a path to pain relief and relaxation. Now, they can continue that path in our Masters of Oriental Medicine program. The Massage Therapy program will provide them with some of the credits needed to apply to our, massage, um, to our Masters in Oriental Medicine program. Um, and so the massage therapy program is about 10 months long uh, and it would prepare you and get you started to, in, in the career of relaxation and pain management. Let me tell you about our facilities. We have an authentic Asian influence where we provide the highest level of education in our state-of-the-art classrooms and library. We also have a student clinic right on campus where well, every day our students see real patients and apply their skills. We also have an herbal pharmacy where we have over 300 raw herbs. And our students are able to put together formulas that will continue to treat our patients right here at our facility. What's great about once you finish your program here at East West College of Natural Medicine is for massage therapists, we'll assist you in the process to become licensed. And then we'll help you find a place to practice your skills, whether it's being a private practitioner or working for somebody else. Or you can continue your education in our Masters in Oriental Medicine program. Now, those students will have to be certified as well. And those students will be assisted by our Career Services Department as well, so they can be begin their path to fulfill their dream. If you're interested in applying to our massage program, It'll all start with a simple phone call where we'll discuss your interest and the program itself. We'll set up a time to meet at the campus where we'll further discuss the program. We'll talk about what you're looking for in a career. I'll show you around the campus so that you can see our student clinic, our educational facilities, our library, and maybe you can meet with financial aid to discuss eligibility. Well, our master's program, if you're interested in our applying to our master's program, that will also start with a simple phone call and a meeting at the campus. So if you're interested in applying to any of our programs, be sure to call us at 941-355-9080. The number is on the bottom of the screen. Or you can go to www.ewcollege.edu. Now back to you, Dr. P. Thank you, Russell, for that information about the programs we're offering at East West College of Natural Medicine. Yeah, really fascinating and interesting approach to this, really hands-on, uh, and, and people can learn a lot, and anybody can go over there and, and see how this works, right? Absolutely. We invite everybody to come um, take a tour of the college. We have a student clinic. If you're interested in the Oriental Medicine program or the massage program, please feel free to either call, speak to Russ, or just stop by. And let's talk about where that is briefly for folks who don't know. It's uh, 3808 North Tamiami Trail, right here in Sarasota. All right. Well, we have a lot more to talk about uh, when we do this final segment. I'm looking forward to that. And we are going to be right back with more Local Doctors on Call.
Ever dream of helping people? At East West College of Natural Medicine, our massage therapy program could help you achieve your dreams. Our program combines the theory and clinical application of various types of massage treatments and modalities. You could discover a path to providing pain relief, help increase mobility, and share relaxation. Let us help you realize your dream. Call 941-355-9080 today. Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Wrench, Dean of Clinical Sciences at East West College of Natural Medicine in Sarasota. Our approach to wellness using Oriental and Western medicine is often referred to as complementary, alternative, integrative, or even holistic medicine. We like to think of it as simply medicine. Call East West College of Natural Medicine today to schedule your consultation or to learn more about our program of Oriental Medicine. Welcome back to Local Doctors on Call. I'm Grant Boxleitner. Dr. Misha Payan joins us. And we've been having a fascinating discussion about natural preventions for dementia and Alzheimer's. And uh, I want to go into a little bit more detail some of these tests that, that people can take. Uh, it's really important to, to kind of identify this. What are some of the approaches that you have as far as these tests go? Sure. We have a, a couple of tests that we would really recommend a, a patient take. One would be an organic acid test where we find out exactly what nutritional deficiencies they have, um, it, it, ranging from B vitamins to glycine, lysine, any, any type Even of... Even iron deficiency, absolutely. we hear a lot about that. Absolutely. Any, any nutritional deficiency we'll be able to find out and come up with a personal regimen. Also a genetic profile. Um, with the genetic profile, we'll be able to tell if, again, a person has uh, variants that would need more methylated vitamins like methylated B12. So in a genetic profile, you can, you can see that, that, that this person is prone to potentially having these Absolutely. Uh, deficiencies? Absolutely. And also Alzheimer's. There's an APOE gene. Um, it doesn't necessarily, again, it gives us a, a, an outline. It doesn't necessarily give us the ability to diagnose that okay. someone will have Alzheimer's, but if there is a predisposition, mm -hmm. um, especially if there are um, two alleles uh, for oh. the APOE gene with the, with the four, th that's a particular gene. If, there's, if it's homozygous, if you got the bad gene from both parents, then unfortunately Caucasians have a 75% um, more risk of, of developing. When do, do you think uh, it's a good idea, I guess it varies on patients, but when is it a good idea, at what age do you maybe begin to take these tests? I would, I always suggest the earlier the better. Mm. Um, just by knowing your genetic profile, right. it tells you the cards that you're dealt. So uh, that doesn't determine if you win the game or not. It's how no. you play your cards. So. Knowledge is power. Exactly. Right? So you can do a whole lifestyle of, um, of modification, a whole lifetime of uh, changes and, and modifications yeah. in diet. And diet and everything that, that we've been talking about. And when we talk about diet, uh, supplements play a key role in this. Um, what are some of the other supplements potentially that people could uh, potentially be uh, recommended to take or that they could consider taking to sure. try to uh, balance themselves out? Sure. When there's actually even a, a, a pharmaceutical drug called serifolin, which is basically methylated B12 mm -hmm. and N-acetylcysteine. Now, what is methylated B12 uh, for uh, folks who don't know? Methylated B12 is just a, it's a, a type of B12 that has a different function in the body okay. without getting too too technical right. but what's interesting is in in the US we think okay if we can go buy a supplement off the off the shelf it's mm -hmm. probably not going to work it's not going to do anything yeah. but here we have an example of two things uh, methylated B12 and N-acetylcysteine that you can get actually both of them from a health food store but putting them together it's a pharmaceutical drug so it's, it's funny how a lot of patients think, okay, I need a prescription for mm. it to work because supplements won't, they won't work. But that's a, really a misconception. Yeah, it, it's a very interesting approach and um, just combining these two things. But, um, you know, are there any other supplements uh, to keep in mind or, or we've kind of hit uh, sure. the highlights? Well, some of the keys are um, magnesium. Okay. Uh, 
vitamin D3 and K2. I, I hear folic acid, folic acid. Uh, people sometimes have a deficiency in that, uh, even like pregnancies and things. Is that something you need to keep an eye on all the time? Well, uh, folic acid is a synthetic version of folate. folate. Like, so then we're talking about methylfolate. Okay. Um, uh, folic acid actually is a, syn a synthetic form of that. Um, invented, I think, in like the 50s. Mm. And that's when they were starting to um, fortify cereals. Yeah. Okay. So they were using the synthetic form. And now we're finding that actually that's probably not the best uh, supplement to grab for. Oh, very, very so fascinating. So I actually tell my patients to avoid folic acid and use folate, folate the natural form. Folate in the pure form. All right. So... Um, We've gone over a lot of material today. Um, what are just some of those key points to keep in mind as we're, as we're summarizing uh, this great discussion today? Sure. I guess the call to action would be to, again, get a team of, of people together, uh, of caregivers, family members, yes. um, caregivers, uh, medical doctors, doctors of osteopathic, dentists, massage therapists, doctors of oriental medicine that are all like-minded that can work as a team and help people um, as, a, as a whole. Yeah, they and often take a say natural... it takes a village. Exactly. In this case, it's a, it's a great approach to ensure that uh, you're getting the best care. Exactly. Oftentimes, these patients aren't the easiest to, uh, to change a lifestyle of habits, so it, it does take a team. And, and the take-home message that we can prevent and even potentially reverse some of these, uh, these uh, symptoms, if not uh, the disease itself. Absolutely. Yeah, great stuff. Um, Dr. Misha Payant, it's been uh, great uh, talking to you today about Thank this fascinating much. subject. I hope that uh, folks really take this to heart because it's important stuff. And um, I want to remind everyone to go to the website, and you can let people know what that is. The phone number is right there as well. Absolutely. Um, the website is ewcollege.org. And again, come visit the college, uh, take a tour, become a, become a patient or even a student of the Oriental Medicine Program or the Massage Therapy Program. Doctor, thanks so much for Thank joining us. Thank you very us. much. And that is going to do it for Local Doctors on Call. Until next time, take care. Ever dream of helping people? At East West College of Natural Medicine, our massage therapy program could help you achieve your dreams. Our program combines the theory and clinical application of various types of massage treatments and modalities. You could discover a path to providing pain relief, help increase mobility, and share relaxation. Let us help you realize your dream. Call 941-355-9080 today. Hello. I'm Dr. Misha Payan, President of East West College of Natural Medicine. For over 20 years, we've been helping our patients improve their health, and more importantly, maintain their health by using Oriental and Western medicine. Many of our patients refer to us as the best kept secret in Sarasota. Call today to schedule your consultation or for more information regarding our program in Oriental medicine. East West College of Natural Medicine. It's not a secret anymore.